Good day, human Latiosites. This is Latios Azuril, and welcome back for the finale of Let's Play Pokemon Grass Jewel, the official video guide. Here we are, back in Little Root Town. Seems like not that long ago since we've moved here. So, first of all, we have Professor Pine's Lab. And, after you actually complete your Hoenn Pokedex, something special happens. Oh, Eric, let's have a look at your Pokedex. Yes, there's no doubt about it. You really have completed the Hoenn Region's Pokedex. That's more than just impressive. I have a gift for you. Consider it my show of appreciation for the fantastic work you've done. My gift is a rare Pokemon only found in another region. You can have any one of these three Pokemon. Okay, in reality, you actually can get these Pokemon in the wild, though they're a bit rare. So, normally in Emerald version, you get a Johto starter. But here, you get something a little bit different. Eric, after this, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna keep battling and sharpening your skills? Or are you gonna try filling the National Pokedex? I'm staying here to help the Professor. Okay, well, good for you. So here, you get to choose one of three second starter Pokemon. Now, the first pair of starter Pokemon you got were from, for, were from Professor Maple, and they were a Raikou and Tear Suicune. This time, you get, a pay, um, you get a Pokemon from Professor Pine, and it is the Ice Pokemon Articuno caught your eye. You're as sharp as ever. So, the Articuno is your choice. Take your time before you decide. They're all invaluable Pokemon. The electric Pokemon Zapdos is your choice. You know how to pick a good one. So, you'll take the Zapdos. Take your time before you decide. They're all invaluable Pokemon. Or, the fire Pokemon Moltres is your choice. You sure know what you're doing. So, you'll take the Moltres. Take your time before you decide. They're all invaluable Pokemon. So you can choose between Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. So from the Kanto Legendary Trio. So your first starter, your original starter Pokemon is from the Johto Trio. But once you complete your Hoenn Pokedex, instead of getting a Johto starter, you get a Kanto Legendary. Which you can't get out um, as a um, stagnant, um, well, static Legendary. You'd have to otherwise get them in Sacred Field. And they're, I mean, they're not, they're kinda rare, so it could take you a while before you find them. But you do get a freebie as your second starter. So I'm actually gonna pick my favorite of the three, which is Articuno. So with that, we received Articuno from Professor Pine. I will be giving Articuno a, a nickname. I'm gonna name it Art. So Articuno was transferred to Lynette's PC and placed in box two. Listen, Eric, you've completed the Hoenn Pokedex, but your Pokemon journey isn't over. There is no end to the road that is Pokemon. Somewhere there is a grassy patch that's waiting for you. Somewhere out there, there just might be. So, we have done a lot of stuff on this journey, from catching legendary Pokemon, to battling against them, battling countless trainers. I guess countless isn't the right word for it, but we have done a lot of stuff. Let's actually take a look back at all the Pokemon that we have actually obtained on this journey. So we have Frank the Merrill, back from Route 104. Joe the Ralts from Route 102. Luke the Riolu from Route 103. Squirtle from Squirtle Square. Totodile from Totodile Pond. Joey the Snorlax from Liberty Cavern. Togepi from Rustboro City. Owl the Hoot Hoots from Route 101. Pika the Pikachu from New Mallville. Cyndaquil from Cyndaquil Field. GG the Why Not from Loveridge Town. Squires the Pachi Risu from New Mallville. Bulbasaur from Bulbasaur Forest. Zoro, the um well, the Zorua from Liberty Cavern. Buzz the Electabuzz from New Mallville. 
Cloud the Cast Form from Route 119, Trico from Trico Woods, Azuril from Azuril Island Cave, Porygon 2 from New Mallville, Charmander from Charmander Park, Swablu from Fortree City, Mudkip from Mudkip Marsh, Torchic from Torchic Plains, Wooper from Lily Cove City, Torque from Magma Cavern, well, the Torkoal, Another Meryl, but from Lily Cove City, Shy the Snorunt from Azuril Island Cave, Lapras from Azuril Island Cave, Sue the Pseudo Wudo from ba the Battle Frontier, Shaman from the Sky Garden. Spike the Victini from Liberty Cavern. Latianata the Latios from Route 118. Cole the Latios from Southern Island. Dealoid the Deoxys from Birth Island. Mew the Mew from Faraway Island. B the Celebi from Eternal Forest. Fox the Ho-Oh from Naval Rock. Silver the Lugia from Naval Rock. Grrr the Groudon from Terra Cave. Kai the Kyogre from Marine Cave. Ray the Rayquaza from the Sky Pillar. Ah. Q the Cubone from the Safari Zone. Ralph the Relicanth from the Underwater Area in Route 124. Wanda the Whale Lord from Moss Deep City. Rocky the Regirock from the Desert Ruins. Icy the Reg Ice from Island Cave. Steely the Registeel from Ancient Tomb, Gene the Mewtwo from Artisan Cave, Sweep the Darkrai from the Deep Basement of Victory Road, Luna the Priscilla from the Dream Dimension, Wish the Jirachi from Meteor Falls, and of course, Art the Articuno we just received from Little Root Town. So we have obtained so many Pokemon, and those are just the ones we don't have on our main team. But we're actually going to be going to our final battle. I can't believe this is finally happening. So. Let's go. Now, this is actually Victory Island. Now, post-game, something um, these people start appearing. Before then, they're really not. But, you can get this Pokeball here, which is just a free Pokeball, nothing that special. Now, there is a website for this game that has a lot of useful information that you can uh, find about Pokemon evolution, Pokemon typing, anything that's really special about this game. Map-wise, I mean, this guide should pretty much um, explain that stuff, but when it comes to, like, how to evolve certain Pokemon, how to obtain well, the typings for different Pokemon, which generations 4, 5, and 6 Pokemon were added, and all the, all sorts of fun stuff there. The guide will help you. Any evolution mechanic changes are also in there. So be sure to check out that website if you have any questions about how to evolve certain Pokemon. Alright, so here you have this guy who will be selling you all these TMs. You can also buy these TMs in Lily Cove City. All 50 TMs are sold here, so you can buy any of them. They're all $1,000. It's not that expensive, so you can pretty much teach your Pokemon whatever moves you want them to learn. She will sell you all sorts of uh, dolls. Once again, these are all sold in Lily Cove City, so you can buy them here, you can buy them there. It really isn't any different. This is just another alternative if, you're not, if you don't happen to be in Lily Cove, you happen to be around Dufer Town. But she, however, will sell you something completely different. She will sell you the same stuff as you could buy on the rooftop sale. Which includes the, rent t the red tent, the blue tent, and the Snorlax doll. Unfortunately, palette-wise, the Whalmer doll and the Rhydon doll got a little bit messed up. But the dolls themselves are not affected, just the icons when they're selling them. So don't worry, when you put a Rhydon doll or a Whalmer doll in your PC or in the room, your room in, Lily in a Little Root Town, it will look normal. It does not. It does not look messed up. They are only in the shop mark data um, preview. But you can buy that stuff from her, so you don't have to wait for the rooftop sale in order to buy the stuff. 
in case you don't feel like waiting for the rooftop cell to occur because it's relatively random as an event. And now for our final battle. Let's take one last look at our team. We have Speedy the Dedene from New Mallville. Rain the Suicune from Route 101. Quacker the Farfetch from Route 103. Matt the Sylveon from the Eevee Garden. Teddy the Teddy Ursa from Alteran Cave. And Chikorita from Chikorita Meadow. So. Oh, there's a Pikachu here. We all know who this is. We all know who this is. Let's go. Obviously not a man of many words. So, here we go! In our final battle of the game against Pokemon Master Red. Alright. So, Red is going to be leading off with the Pikachu. Obviously. Alright. You know what? Let's Earthquake it. Speedy is going to outspeed like the boss he is. Alright, let's see how much damage we can do to this thing. It might not Oko, though, because it's stab, it's physical. Yeah, it's just going to just live. Obviously, Red has a Surfing Pikachu. Red has that Surfing Pikachu. You know what? I want to see how much damage Moonblast does. It's not super effective, but it's special and it's stab. So, let's do this. Alright, take this Moonblast. It's gonna do just about as much as Earthquake, but that's okay. We're gonna take this down another hit, if not outspeeding us. So, Pikachu is going down. Next up is going to be Charizard. I'm gonna go into Teddy. Teddy can go for a strength, which is quite effective. Alright. So. Let's strength it up. We are... I think we might have activated the Quick Claw there. I don't know if Teddy actually... I don't think Teddy outspeeds the Charizard normally. Alright, it's gonna live though. There's the Sacred Fire. That is gonna hurt. It's probably gonna burn. He's probably going for a full restore. That's just the one-hit KO. Teddy, I am sorry. All right. That is the kind of power we're working with here. We're dealing with that. Speedy, I'm going into you now. I need you to outspeed this thing. You are fast. You are fast. We're landing the Thunderbolt. That Charizard is going down. It's not living. Goodbye, Charizard. Thanks for playing. Get out of here. Next up is going to be the Snorlax. Alright, I am going to go into Quacker for this, because we can go for a Stab Brick Break. And that thing doesn't have any Stab that is good particularly against anyone on our team. Although it could hit us pretty hard. I'm going to go for the Brick Break. It's a physical move, so it should do some damage to this thing. It's Stab, it's physical. If we can get a Crit, that thing's not living. Can we get the Stick Crit? We're not getting the Crit. It's going to go for a Payday. That is going to hurt. In fact, I am pretty sure Quacker is not going to live a physical stab Payday from Snorlax. And you get the crit! You get the crit! Oh my goodness. Alright, you know what? There is no doubt in my mind that Red is going to go for a full restore now. There is no doubt in my mind. I'm going to go into Matt. I'm going to go for a Psychic and try to get that special D-drop. Then Moonblast can KO it. I am pretty sure Matt can outspeed a Snorlax. So if we can get the special lead drop, we'll be in some good shape. If we can't get the special lead drop, then we'll be in, well, relatively less good shape. There's the special lead drop. So I'm going to go for another one, even though I don't think Matt is going to be able to live a, um, I don't think Matt can live a Payday. I don't think Matt's going to live a stab payday from the Snorlax, although I don't know for sure. Matt is going to live! Red is probably going to go for a full restore at this point, but I don't think Moonblast will be a 2-hit KO. Either way, Psychic is a safe play because we can get the special D-drop, 
then another Moon Blast would probably be enough. So we're gonna actually take it down with the Psychic. He is not full restoring right there. Next up is gonna be the Venusaur. It's probably gonna have a Sludge Bomb for Matt. So I don't think it's a very good idea to um, stay in because I don't think Matt's gonna outspeed. I'm gonna try anyway though. I probably should actually just heal up um, Quacker, to be honest. I think Quacker is the most equipped to handle the Venusaur. Quacker is definitely the most equipped. I don't think Sylveon outspeeds Venusaur. It might, but I don't want to bank my chances on that. So I'm sorry, Matt. I'm going to have to let you take the Sludge Bomb to the face. Because I feel like Quacker is more equipped to live. There's the Sludge Bomb. That's going to do a lot of damage. Even if it is special. So Matt is going to go down, but this way I can go into Quacker. So let's go for a fly. Venusaur is going to outspeed us. It's not stab, so it shouldn't KO unless you crit. Not going to crit. We're going to land a fly unless we miss, which I don't think we're going to miss. So if we can get the stick crit, I think that thing is done. If we can get the stick crit, the Venusaur is going down. We're not going to get the crit. We're not going to outspeed. So at this rate, I might as well heal someone up. I'm going to heal up Teddy. I don't know why I chose Teddy over Matt, but whatever. Quacker is not going to outspeed and is not going to take a sludge bomb. But we are in... <laughs> Why do things keep on critting Quacker? Seriously. We have the stick. They don't have the stick. We have the stick. Alright, you know what? Mm. I'm gonna go into Rain to Ice Beam. It's not a Mega Venusaur. It doesn't get thick fat, so Ice Beam should do some damage. If it lives, though, I don't think Rain wants to take a Leaf Blade to the face. It's not gonna live, so that thing is gonna go down. Alright. Next up is going to be the Blastoise. Mm. Speedy or Chikorita? I think Speedy is more likely to live a Blizzard. Speedy is more likely to live the Blizzard, so I'm going to do this. See what we can do. That's Thunderbolt. Oh my god, you're going to live a You're going to land a Sheer Cold and outspeed us. You are going to outspeed us. I don't think you actually outspeed us. I don't think you actually outspeed us. I am fairly certain all of Red's Pokemon have a Quick Claw. Oh my god, I should have healed up Speedy. I should have healed up Speedy. That Blizzard is gonna hurt. Chikorita, I need you to live. I need you to live. I need you to somehow live. Somehow pull through. Somehow pull through. Somehow pull through. Not gonna happen. Alright. Rain? It's up to you. It's up to you. That thing's gonna shear cold again, most likely. It's gonna shear cold. It's probably gonna land it if, if I'm not lucky. Mm. So I'm gonna heal up Speedy. At least it's not going for Fain Attack. I don't think. It, I don't. I don't know if it has Fain Attack. I don't remember. If it has Fain Attack, then it's already game over. Okay. I want to crunch to potentially get the special D drop, but I think I'm safer just healing up someone, some of our Pokemon. The safer play is to heal up our Pokemon. The more Pokemon we have alive, the more we can actually use to max revive. You're going to land a sheer cold and rain. It's resisted, but it's still a one hit KO. You're not missing these one hit KOs, which is a problem for us. I need Speedy to outspeed and to paralyze this thing somehow. So we de we definitely outspeed. It's definitely a quick claw boost. We need the para so this thing can't shear cold us. If it shear colds or freezes us, I'd rather it freeze us than shear cold. It's gonna hydro pump. Hmm. He's probably gonna full restore, which is gonna give us an opportunity to go for a thunderbolt. No, he's getting a crit. He is getting a crit. All right, you know what? I can feign attack that thing if I want to. 
I'm not gonna faint attack. We're doing this the we're doing this the non one hit KO way. We're doing this in my mind the honorable way. So, in hindsight, I probably should have gone for a psychic to get the special D drop because I know he's gonna full restore. But I'd rather just heal up two Pokemon instead and let Speedy just handle this thing one at a time, assuming this thing doesn't quick claw. If we can get him to run out of full restores, I can heal up Rain to E-Speed to take it out. You know what, I am going to bank on that. Because Rain can outspeed it with an E-Speed, even with the, click the Quick Claw. Quick Claw only outspeeds if you have equal priority. So Matt is going to go down now. Assuming he doesn't Quick Claw boost now, we're good. All right, we're going to land Thunderbolt. A lot of the very strong trainers have Pokemon with Quick Claw, so you might you might normally outspeed, but they might actually just go first. Out of pure luck, you're going to land the Sheer Cold. You're gonna land a sheer cold. Now, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do now. Because you probably still have... You probably still have a, have a full restore. So I'm actually just gonna revive up speedy. If you don't have a full restore, I can go into rain to E speed. And that should be enough, although Blastly does have some decent defense. All right, I can just max revive another Pokemon, then we'll be, it'll be likely never actually, um, because we're not going to be able to attack anyway. I could have faint attacked, but once again, I'm not trying to faint attack right now. So, I'm going to heal up Matt. You see, the Blastoise wouldn't be as big of a problem if it didn't have sheer cold. But that sheer cold that it's spamming is just destructive as anything, and it's landing them too. You see, all these one hit KO moves is kind of why I don't know if a Nuzlocke would be possible. Although, mo although for the most part, there aren't really that many or one hit KO moves I uh, used during the actual before the Pokemon League. So in theory, as long as it doesn't crit right now, we can live. As long as that Hydro Pump isn't a crit, we should live. Um. All right. Good. He's not going to full restore now. He's not going to quick claw. The blast place is going down. And of course now we crit. Couldn't crit before. But you only get crits when they're not necessary. You see that? Next up is going to be the Lapras. Alright, let's Thunderbolt. Speedy is probably going to get taken down now. I don't think we're going to one-shot the Lapras unless we crit. Can we get a para at least? We're getting the para! Be fully powered. Be fully powered. Come on. No, you're landing on Hydro Pump. Speedy is gonna go down. I feel like Speedy is doing most of this battle. Alright, Matt. Let's go. Let's Moonblast. That thing is gonna use a Quick Claw. That is the only explanation for it outspeeding paral with the paralysis. It's gonna miss. We're landing a Moonblast, and we are taking that thing down. With that, we have defeated Pokemon Master Red. The man of few words. Oh, yeah. We did it. And we are back in the Hall of Fame. So, Dedene, well, Speedy the Dedene, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. Rain the Suicune, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. Quacker the Farfetch'd, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. Matt the Sylveon, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. Teddy the Teddy Ursa, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. And Chikorita, welcome back to the Hall of Fame. Once again, we have done it. So, you can actually battle Red every time you enter the, um, every time you face the Pokemon League. 
as long as you get to the champion battle, you can battle Red again. He actually goes away after you ba after you battle him, but he returns when you uh, go through the Pokemon League again. You don't have to actually beat the champion for him to actually return. Little minor glitch, but as long as you get to the champion on battle, he will return, and you can battle him as many times as you want. So he's it's kind of like in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, where once you get past um, every time you beat Lance, you can battle Red again. It's like that. In this case, it's Barney, though. Uh, you, you can battle Red once again. And you get to the Hall of Fame again. However, there is actually a newer version that I started using after the um, I, I got to that part in the, this series. In order to deal with some of the glitches going on with uh, save file issues, when you defeat... Once you finish the, the Storybrooke story arc, the, the first story arc, and you get to the part where you get sent back to Little Root, it no longer goes into the Hall of Fame, it just warps you there. This way you don't have to worry about any issues with, uh, with save file problems or Hall of Fame data getting messed up. However, with Red you still do because it is, um, kind of supposed to be, uh, reminiscent of the Johto games. So with that, we have once again made it to the Hall of Fame. So with that, that is pretty much it. There are a few other small things that go on within this game, but for the most part, we have covered the major challenges. Now, I didn't go through every single evolution of Pokemon that were added in or changed in this game, but as I said, they are noted in the, um, on the website for this game that I built. So, you can go check out that website and find all sorts of information about that. The, I believe this Let's Play is embedded in on that site. The trailers are on that site. Um, the uh, basic premise, so the beginning of the plot is there. All sorts of information about the, the type differences for Pokemon, like which Pokemon were given new typings, which Pokemon were given new evolution methods, all sorts of stuff as well as well what those evolution methods are. So be sure to actually go um, check that out. Other than that, this, this Let's Play has been so fun, um, I really can't describe it. Uh, I got a chance to play a game that I made with you guys. That is pretty much it. It wasn't a Nuzlocke, but honestly, I think I might have had more fun with it not being a Nuzlocke, where I didn't have to worry about the stress of Pokemon fainting. Of course, I still am not even confident if a Nuzlocke is even possible with this game, unless you do so much grinding that you're over-leveled. If you're not over-leveled, you're probably going to get hit by something that will one-hit KO somehow, unless you were overly prepared. So... I don't know about that, but I, I mean, obviously this game I, I am partial to. I made it, when I made it, I had preferences of my own technically in mind. Um, like you can tell some of the Pokemon I was using were some of the Pokemon I really, really like. Uh, other Pokemon, um, I really do like Farfetch'd. I never get a chance to use it for the most part, so I, I was happy to be able to do that. And... Of course, I did choose uh, Suicune as the starter. Um, I really just... I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had fun, too, in this journey. I hope it was informative. I hope you guys got a better sense of what this game entails. And I hope if, it, if you are checking it out as a guide, that it helped you understand some of the strategies involved in getting through. Because it is, it's a bit different than Emerald. There's some new stuff in, um, that is involved. The physical special splits in there, the fairy types in there, new Pokemon typings are in there. Fourth, fifth, and sixth gen Pokemon, well, some of them are in there. So I just can't thank you guys enough for joining me on this adventure, and I just can't believe it's finally coming to an end. So, as um, most of you know, a new game is in production at the moment, Pokemon Scorching Scarlet. 
and that game will be quite a bit different. It is built on the Pokemon Ruby engine, and I am having so much fun making that game. I'm hoping it can come out sometime soon. But in the meantime, we have Sun and Moon! So, that will be fun in the Alola region. That said, thank you guys for joining me on this journey. I have had a blast. We've explored Hoenn in a completely different way. The way I decided to portray it in this case. So, thank you guys so much for watching and joining me on this adventure. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on our next adventure. Goodbye.